Previously, we talked about alkanes, which were hydrocarbons that contain all single bonds. And now we're going to talk about hydrocarbons that can have uh, double or triple bonds. And those are, of course, alkenes and alkynes. An alkene is a hydrocarbon with at least one double bond. And so the first uh, hydrocarbon that can contain a double bond is not actually methane, it's actually um, ethane. So instead of ethane with a single bond between those two carbons, we would actually form a double bond between those uh, two carbons. And that would turn it from an alkene, alkane into an alkene. Now, we can also figure out how many hydrogens are uh, involved uh, in this molecule and uh, of course the rule that we're going to get us there is that each carbon has to have four bonds. So since this carbon has a double bond between the two carbons it actually only needs to bond to two hydrogens. So the formula for this uh, simplest alkene would be C2H2 and the uh, systematic name would be to uh, Start with the prefix from the alkane, so ethane, but change the uh, ending to ene. -E. So this will be ethene to show that it has a double bond in, in it. Okay? And then, uh, of course, we could have alkynes, which are of at least one triple bond. Um, an alkyne is a hydrocarbon with at least one triple bond. So again, we can't start off with methane, we'd have to start off with two carbons. And two carbons with a triple bond would look like that. And then, of course, the number of hydrogens bonded to each uh, carbon would change because, again, each carbon only has needs four bonds. And so now each carbon is bonded to only one hydrogen. And then to differentiate between ethane, ethene, we also need to change the name of this hydrocarbon. And so, again, we're going to use the ending. We're going to use Y and E. And so this will be ethine. E-T-H-Y-N-E. -E. That is the systematic name for this hydrocarbon. Of course, it has a more common name, um, which is acetylene. Acetylene. Okay? And so, of course, these can um, get bigger. We can have alkenes and alkynes with more than two carbons. And to do so, we can actually go back to uh, skeletal formation. So we've got, in this scenario, we've got a hydrocarbon with one, two, three, four, five, six uh, carbons. And let's say instead of having a single bond between uh, these two carbons, we have a double bond. We could show that by just drawing another line in between those carbons. So that's a double bond uh, between that molecule. Now, of course, uh, that double bond can exist in a couple of different places on this molecule. So we could draw this hydrocarbon again. And instead of having the double bond between the second and third carbon, we could draw it between the third and the fourth. And so we would have to be able to name these two different isomers. And so what we would need to do is label this as one. Again, we're going to count the number of carbons and tell you where it is. So we one, two, three, four, five, six. And so this is uh, hexene. And since the double bond starts on the second carbon, this will be 2-hexene. And in this scenario with the green uh, molecule, 1, 2, 3, the double bond starts on the third carbon, so this will be 3-hexene. Um, and of course we could uh, have the same scenario set up for alkynes. 
So we could draw one, two, three. Let's do four. One, two, three, four, five molecule or car. Excuse me. One, two, three, four, five carbons. And let's say there's a triple bond between this this carbon and that carbon. So this and that carbon have a triple bond. All right. So we could uh, name this. Uh, we would need to name this as well. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this would be. Um, pentine and we would have to of course number tell you where that triple bond is um, if we numbered it one two three four five we would get three pentine but that actually is the incorrect way to number it again we want to number it with the lowest possible number so if we number it the other way one two three four five we could see we could also name this molecule 2 pentine and that of course would be the correct way to name it because that is the lowest number 2 pentine all right well it turns out that there's another uh, issue with um, double bonds even with 2 hexene or 3 hexene there's also another isomer that can uh, develop and that is known as the cis trans isomers okay so uh, let's draw another um, alkene. Let's do it with four. So one, two, three, four. And let's say this um, has a double bond between the second and third um, hydrocarbons, or second and third carbons. All right, and so what I've drawn is basically this molecule. All right, so we've got four molecules or excuse me, four carbon atoms, and there's a double bond between the two carbons, all right? So you can see that right here. There's a double bond between these two carbons. And therefore, it also only needs uh, two, or each carbon only needs one hydrogen uh, to bond it to make four. And so this is the um, structural formula for two, what would this molecule be called? Two, one, two, three, four. So that's butane. So two butene. All right. But it turns out that there's uh, something very different between a double bond and a single bond in carbon atoms. Okay. It turns out that uh, single uh, single bonds can freely rotate, and I can even do it with this model. I can just turn this uh, carbon atom, and it can rotate. So these hydrogens can uh, sort of end up wherever they want. Same thing with this carbon over here. This is a freely rotating uh, bond. Single bonds are freely rotating. Double bonds, on the other hand, do not. I cannot turn this uh, bond. The double bond prevents the rotation of these two carbon atoms. Now you might think that this is just, well, this is just a toy model. Um, of course, it may be in um, actuality, in nature, this double bond could rotate. But it turns out that it can't. Um, if you were taking a more advanced uh, chemistry, you would talk about the hybridization scheme of this, and it turns out that there's a pi bond involved in the double bond, and it acts like a bracket, just like this, where it um, can't or it won't allow the bond to rotate. Okay, so uh, having said that, it actually turns out there's two different isomers that can set up with the same molecule. Uh, we could have a scenario where, like this, each hydrogen atom are on different sides of this double bond, or we could have a scenario where this hydrogen atoms are on the same side, okay? Where, see, again, we have the same isomer, uh, two butene, but this time the two hydrogens are on the same side of this double bond. And again, it still can't rotate. And so you can see, I'll try to sneak all of this into the uh, frame, is that this isomer, this uh, molecule, takes on that characteristic seesaw shape like all uh, hydrocarbons but this one doesn't this uh, scenario uh, prevents that uh, same structure from occurring and so this takes on a very different shape than this isomer okay and so of course we need to be able to tell which isomer we have and then these, of course these are called cis trans isomers and so of course we could try to write this with a skeletal function and so here is the structural formula for this butene, where they 
occur in a pretty much um, seesaw fashion. And of course we want to be able to draw this, the isomer, um, with the hydrogens on the same side. And we draw that like this, where the double bond comes straight across and then comes down. And uh, although we don't usually, we could draw the hydrogen. So here the hydrogens are on opposite sides, and then here they're on the same side of the double bond. Okay, to show here's the blue isomer, and then here's the black isomer. All right. And so both of these are two butene. Doo -doo -doo. There goes the pen. So both of these are two butene. But one of them is the cis isomer, and one of them is the trans. Now, uh, when the hydrogen atoms are on the same side, they are on cis to each other. So cis to butene. And when they're across from each other, they are trans. And I always remember that as transatlantic, across, trans to butene. And so these are the two isomers, and these can always set up uh, when you have a double bond. Now, eventually, we'll start talking about it in this course. But you probably you can think of these. Um, you know, you've heard this prefix before. You've heard of trans fats or trans fatty acids. Well, the analog to those trans fats are cis fats. Uh, one of them is good for us. One of them is well, not good for us, but one of them is not as harmful to us, or one of them is beneficial to us, and the other one is not. And, of course, you probably know from news that trans fatty acids are not very um, uh, nutritious or can actually be harmful to us. That's why we'll actually talk about uh, why that is, and it's primarily because of the different shapes that the two isomers can set up.